What's going on, everybody? New York Giants training camp day six. There's a lot to talk about and recap from this day, so I don't want to waste any time. Let's go right into it. So I split this into three chunks. We have injuries in the first part because there's actually a few to get to, then the practice itself, and then obviously the signing uh, the New York Giants made to address their offensive line in Greg Van Ro uh, Roten. So I'm going to get to that last. Okay, the injuries first. Brian Burns, he did get injured yesterday. He participated in practice today, but didn't look exactly 100%. I think the Giants kind of took it easy with him during the individual drills, but he did actually play and limped a little bit off, off his ankle during team drills. Uh, it didn't limit him, though. He still played for most of the snaps, I believe. Uh, but a little bit interesting there. Burns did practice, so that's all that matters. Burns did practice today. Lawrence Cager, on the other hand, who got injured yesterday and stopped practicing, did not practice today. He has a hamstring injury. He didn't practice and most likely won't practice for the rest of the week. That's my impression that I got from what the beat reporter said and what Brian Dable said before practice today. The Giants have off on Wednesday. They then have two practices on Thursday and Friday back-to-back, -back, off on Saturday, back on Sunday. And then it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I believe. I went through that really fast, but I think that's what it is. So maybe Lawrence Cager, hopefully, I mean, obviously I hope he's back, takes the day off and he's back by Thursday, but I think the earliest we're going to see Lawrence Cager is Sunday, this Sunday, August the 4th, I think that is, but we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully I'm wrong. John Michael Schmitz, shoulder injury. It's the same shoulder that he injured this past season, although apparently it's a different concern in that shoulder, whatever that means. We don't have much information on that, but he did not practice again, meaning more uh, more snaps for Austin Schlotman uh, at center for the New York Giants. He struggled a little bit today. Hopefully that center signing uh, or the signing um, of Roten can change that and maybe have Schlotman as a backup more. Or also maybe another center signing down the line can change that as well. There's still some center free agents the Giants can target. Maybe we'll talk about that in our next episode of the podcast. Dexter Lawrence practice, but also didn't look 100%. He's recovering from an illness. It doesn't seem like COVID. Obviously, if he's practicing with the team, it is not COVID. Uh, but the deal is with Dexter Lawrence is that he didn't practice yesterday because of that illness. And again, he doesn't look 100%. He's probably pretty sick. Hopefully, he takes today off on Wednesday to recover, and he's back by Thursday, and he's good to go. And then Tyler Newbin, the last player that I want to talk about with an injury, the safety for the New York Giants that they drafted this past year, missed another practice with that calf injury. It's starting to sound like a concern for the New York Giants, but there's a couple players, and I'm going to get to in a little bit, stepping up in his absence, one specific safety in back-to-back -back days of padded practices. And speaking of practice, let's talk about some practice. Let's talk about Daniel Jones and this poor, poor Giants offense today. Went six for 14, almost threw two interceptions. One of them was thrown deep to Nick McLeod, where he had a nice tip out of bounds on Malik Neighbors. And then another one was deflection. It was a really bad play. It would have been, it was a, it was a, um, a fake handoff, which let uh, Kayvon Thibodeau unblocked, left him unblocked on the right side of the offensive line, rushed Daniel Jones. It would have been a sack, but he can't sack the quarterback. So then Jones is going to look for an option, tipped by a defensive lineman, and it's on the ground, literally sitting on the ground, facing upwards like this is Brian Burns, who almost catches it, but it tips out of his hands and goes onto the turf. Six for 14, that is bad. Halfway through, he was three for seven. So they go double that, double both. It's six for 14. Was underthrowing receivers, was overthrowing receivers on easy throws too. There was a throw to Darius Slate and I posted on our Instagram. Maybe I'll put it on here when I'm talking about it. That it was literally just an out route a few yards down the field and he throws it over him. Then in one-on-ones, it's literally one-on-ones. This is an overthrow. Darius Slayton, he gets a hand on it to make sort of like a one-handed catch if he could, but he had to jump high for that ball, and he still only got one hand on it. Maybe he wouldn't be able to make the catch. I don't know. But in a one-on-one -on -one where Darius Slayton had about two or three yards of separation when he did his hook in, Daniel Jones still overthrew him. That is unacceptable. And Jones, a bad day today. You cannot dodge around that. Anyway, it was a poor day for the offense overall. Someone who was not seeing the field a lot in this offense today was Malik Neighbors, who looked like he got a little bit uh, of less reps to rest, I assume, although he does have a day off tomorrow, so I don't really understand that. But uh, that is what the Giants and Brian Dable decided to give Malik Neighbors less playing time uh, today. So I guess you can kind of do give or take, checks and balances, whatever you want to call it. 
if the offense is looking good or looking bad, excuse me, then the defense has to look good. It's the same team, right? So the Giants defense was playing well against the Giants offense. Was it a mix of both where the offense was bad? I don't know. But the defense did look really good. And I do want to shout out two players specifically. One I already mentioned, Nick McLeod, who had a really nice pass breakup on Malik Neighbors on that deep throw, got a hand on it. And then he also was playing physical, I think, against Wandell Robinson in 11 on 11 drills come the end of practice. That was his second pass breakup. Uh, I'm not 100%. Yeah, I think it was against Wandale. McLeod has been playing physical in Bowen's defense since training camp has begun. We saw that evident last week. In Thursday's one-on-one -on -one when he and I think that was when him and Wandell matched up twice and he was really physical with Wandell. He seems really into it. And that is good from the Giants cornerbacks because we need them to be physical because that might be the only thing they have. They don't, I mean, I'm not going to say they don't have a lot of talent, but compared to the other NFL cornerback rooms, the Giants cornerbacks overall are much more average than around the league. So to see a guy step up like Nick McLeod in training camp is a big deal. It's a good thing, and hopefully he'll be able to lead our team this season and be one of the best cornerbacks on the team uh, because he's really been showing that so far in training camp. Safety, Javarius Owens now. Two interceptions in two days of padded practices, back-to-back -back days. He played with the second-team defense today. He's really trying to step up in his chances with an injured Tyler, injured Tyler Newbin uh, you know, out for the New York Giants right now. Owens is really taking a shot, and he's doing it successfully today. It was almost a drop. It was a bobble in his hands, and he got it. He caught it just in time, getting his feet in bounds. It was a really, really fun interception to watch, and the Javarius Owens train keeps on riding after two days of padded practices. We'll see if Newbin's back on Thursday. I do hope he is. If he's not, let's see how long Javarius Owens can keep this up because today that was a really fun play to see. And then finally, what I have here, the Giants signing. I know this is technically not training camp activities practice-wise, but it is a big deal. I do need to mention it. That's why I saved it for the very end. The Giants signed offensive tackle Greg Van Roten. Cornerback Aaron Robinson was waived because of this. A failed physical once again. Robinson, the Giants draft pick, I believe, in 2021 now. Looked good then. Had a few good plays that year. And then injuries just continued to hurt Aaron Robinson literally. And also with his career, I think after this, you know, if he's unable to pass a physical just because of how bad his lower body is bruised from injuries throughout his career, this might be it in the NFL for Aaron Robinson. But for Greg Van Roten, the new tackle, the new swing tackle for the New York Giants, he's had some time in the NFL. He's 34 years old, 71 career starts. This is what you call a seasoned veteran. He started all 17 games at right guard last season for the Raiders. Before the Raiders, in order from his beginning of career to now, he was with the Packers, the Seahawks, the Jaguars, the Jets, and the Buffalo Bills. Bills, maybe there's a connection there with Joe Shane and Brian Dable. I don't know. Uh, and then this move now securing Roten, obviously, is a good veteran signing to have. He's going to really help the depth of the New York Giants to have players that will go further down the line that shouldn't be starting. And also for him to either swing in on either side, most likely the left tackle spot. But that, that also leaves John Runyon, right? Is John Runyon going to move to the left side of the offensive line for the Giants? Where is uh, Van Roten going to play? That's going to be all questions, but it's good questions. It's good questions to ask. We want to have an offensive line. If we're giving Daniel Jones this year, the sixth year for Daniel Jones to try and succeed, we need to give him an offensive line to do that. The Giants are already on the way of doing that. Van Roten is a signing that is going to help them do that. Well, with the Van Roten signing, I don't know if this is going to piss off a lot of Giants fans or it's going to make them really happy, but it seems to be the end of, of the starting right tackles days for Evan Neal. With this signing, Jermaine Illuminor seems to be locked in 100% staying at right tackle, staying at starting right tackle, that is. His primary backup then being Evan Neal. But also Evan Neal's, Evan Neal's injured right now, and he's probably not going to be fully healthy for a while. But even when he does return, that's Illuminor's spot to lose. So I say it one more time. The starting or the days of Evan Neal starting for the New York Giants at right tackle for right now look to be over. So with that being said, that's everything I got to today in this video. I don't want to waste any more of your time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. Hit that subscribe button. Day off tomorrow, day seven of training camp on Thursday. I will be there Thursday, Friday, Sunday. I got to get tickets, but hoping to go Monday and Tuesday of the following week.
Stay tuned on our social media platforms for the training camp updates at the Giant Take Pod on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all of those places. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.